Hello, I'm Ross van der Merwe, and in this video abstract, I'll introduce our paper titled Advanced and Versatile Signal Conditioning for GNSS Receivers Using the High-Rate DFT-Based Data Manipulator. In a typical satellite navigation receiver, the digital signal conditioning is done after the analog-to-digital conversion. It could address interference mitigation, decimation, resampling, signal corrections, and equalization tasks to provide the best possible quality signal for navigation processing. Therefore, the better signal conditioning, the better the receiver can acquire and track the satellite signals. This article presents a theoretical foundation and analysis of the high-rate DFT-based data manipulator, HDDM. The HDDM uses a Fourier transform to segment the spectrum into multiple bands and manipulates it. But unlike other Fourier methods, it calculates the transform for each sample offset resulting in high increased processing costs. However, it reduces ringing and distortion effects introduced by batchwise processing, improving the signal quality. In this article, we argue that the additional processing is worth it if the HDDM addresses multiple signal conditioning functions in a single architecture. First, interference mitigation is considered as the typical use case for signal conditioning. The HDDM provides superior performance with pulse signals than other mitigation methods and competitive performance with other interferences. Second, practical methods to restructure the spectrum are considered. It allows the signals of interest for a GNSS receiver to be compressed into a smaller band to reduce sampling rates and data throughputs. Such an approach is particularly interesting for recording platforms for software-defined radio receivers. Here is an example with the L1 band, where the open signals for all four major global systems are compressed within 40 MHz of bandwidth. Third, equalization of the received spectrum is considered. Amplitude and phase distortions caused by the antenna and analog front end results in a distorted autocorrelation function, which degrades navigation processing. This problem is hurtful to wideband and higher order box signals. By estimating the frequency response, the signal can be corrected to improve these distortions. Lastly, to demonstrate that the HDDM is a practical method, a firmware implementation shows the real time operation of the HDDM. Here, the spectrum before and after the HDDM is shown against an exemplary wideband chirp signal. At the same time, almost no reduction in tracking performance of a GNSS receiver is shown. Firmware implementation considerations are discussed in the paper for the interested developer. If the content is interesting for you, you can find more details and analysis in the full article on the Institute of Navigation's website. If there are any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you for watching and have a great day.